fix the issues that had arose before. But so we have run this data here. We've dropped off the ID, the date, the zip code from the, the Kings County house price data set. Uh, when we want to apply then these machine learning uh, algorithms, uh, we need to split, you know, you, what's your target variable? It's the price of the property. And then what are the explanatory variables? It's everything else. So basically when we run this code, it's saying, look, take the data set that you have here, put price to one side, call it Y, and put everything else and call it X. This capital uppercase X is everything else. The lowercase Y is the price then uh, we need to, uh, most uh, machine learning type approaches, a recommended uh, framework is to set out your data in such a way that you set aside, let's say in this case, 30% of your data that you reserve to one side. And you say, look, whatever model you create, keep back 30% of your data so that you can test it. Right, so it's great if you get a model. It's great if you get a high accuracy within the in sample data of the model. But you need to, to just see is that robust. So basically, it, using this SK learn and import in train test split. Basically, we're taking our data, right? The uh, twenty one thousand six hundred and thirteen uh, rows, and we're splitting it into a 3070 split and it's doing it at random. It's also doing it in a way typically that doesn't prejudice. So if there's a, a bit of skew or something in the data, it tends to pick out the data in proportion so that you're not getting uh, two data sets that are diametrically opposed. Okay, so we've done that. We've split the data into the X and the Y, the target and then the attributes, the predictors, if you like, and the target variable and we split it according to training and testing. And then we want to, the most basic normal type of, most fundamental type of analysis that you would typically use when modeling is OLS, which is an ordinary least squares um, regression type estimate. But a key here is that you're using the training data. So you're running, you're setting out your linear regression model you're regressing the X's onto the Y, onto the Y's, and then you're getting a fit, right? But you're only doing it with 70% of the data. And then you're going to predict the Y's. Okay, you go in and you say, look, I want to have a look at the model prediction using just basically the training data. And then you want to get a measure of, okay, what kind of accuracy and typically R squared is something and the adjusted R squared, which takes account of the, the degrees of freedom. But you're typically running, you're looking at the R squared, the, the highest R squared is 100% or one. We're getting 69, that wouldn't be awful. That actually would be quite respectable um, as a measure of accuracy. And the adjusted R squared is still quite good, 69, 70, right? So that's even, that's quite good compared to the R squared. So you're not losing too much by just having extra variables in there. Um, the key question then is, okay, that's great. That's for the in sample. That's what your training data. Does it work for the testing data? Okay, now before we do that, we might just eyeball a little bit the, the prediction. We'd like to visualize the difference between the actual prices. So that's the, the true prices in the training data against the predicted values. So again, this is for the 70%. We're using the Y train data and we're looking at the predictions. And if it was perfectly, if it was 100% accurate, it just would go up in a straight line here. But what we're getting is a sort of a nonlinear effect, right? So there's something a little bit uh, nonlinear. The OLS model, ordinary least squares or linear regression is linear. It's linear relationships. We don't quite have that here. Looks like there's something non-linear. Um, and we can in inspect then the amount of errors that we have, right? So basically look at the predicted price against the residuals. And uh, what we see again is that little bit of an arc and then a widening out. And the maximum, sometimes we're off a lot. So the residual is the level of error in the estimation, the difference between the predicted and the actual. And sometimes we're off by as much as 4 million. 
on the upside and minus 1 million on the downside, right? So that's fairly, these are fairly substantial errors then around the pricing and you might wonder what's going on. So uh, we can check maybe is our, um, are we getting a kind of normal distribution in errors? I'd say we do have something uh, in terms of normality. Um, we look as if we're close to normality. We have a close to mean of zero. Now there is right skew. So probably that's what's going on up here. And then the left bit, the, the negatives are down this side. So that's what we're observing down here. So there is a bit more skew this end. And a few of these are driving a lot of the error. So if you're doing this and you had a bit of time on your hands, what you could typically, what you might, your approach here would uh, the regression model, if you wanted to improve accuracy, you'd start removing these outliers, right? You'd be picking off, look, maybe there's something, maybe that 33 bedroom house or something is a bit off, right? You'd pick out what you would expect are kind of the, the houses that don't fit neatly into the rest of the, in terms of categorization, and you might remove be removing those in order to remove some of the error that you're observing, right? And that's a bit of a laborious task. It's also a bit of an art. And it's also sometimes when you're removing the outliers, you're removing in, uh, valuable information. Okay, now the, finally what you want to do is just to determine what if you took that other 30% that you had left out at the beginning and it, stick that into your model and see what level of error uh, you're getting, right? And produce an R squared and adjusted R squared and a mean absolute error, a mean squared error and a root mean squared error, right? To determine how good uh, your model is. And when we run that, now I should do predicted and then get our output here. We're still getting 69%. So it would appear as if in sample, out of sample, OLS is rel relatively robust, right? Because the error hasn't, what you might expect is that could drop off a lot if the, and if it was, then it would mean your model is kind of, it's okay, but uh, in sample, but once you go out of sample, you're not, the model is not performing. So that's a kind of uh, a safety check uh, that with the test data, are you, how is the R doing, right? Uh, then um, if we move away from OLS, uh, the other types of modeling and one that's very popular is this random forest. And a random forest is a little bit like a decision tree, except it does this kind of multi uh, sampling of, uh, it, it cre instead of creating a single classification or regression tree, it does multiple maybe, you know, many trees so that you have this idea of a forest and then it just takes a majority vote, right? Uh, now we're using sklearn on some and we're doing, uh, going to import in the random forest regressor. So this follows very closely what we had done with OLS. Again, it's, uh, we're taking the same training data for X and Y, so that's all the same. Uh, what you notice is when you run the estimation, this thing is turning around quite a bit. And it's just a, a much more computationally intensive type estimation compared to the uh, estimation we did with OLS. So random forest puts a pressure on your processor. And then we want to do the same. Let's do a predict against actual and output the R squared and adjusted R squared, look at your error measures and of course, you're getting 98% here, which is just fabulous. Um, and that's great. And well, uh, can we observe that? Well, you can see it's looking more like a straight line here before when we compared, you know, the uh, prices against predicted prices, it was quite distributed. And then it looks like a bit of an arc, right? This time we have what I would say is more like a straight line right? Uh, and just you don't have that much error uh, in, in sample at least. And we can compare the magnitude for the predicted prices, look at the residuals, like this again is the error. The maximum error here is 1 million and down here is negative 1.5, right? So, you know, when we compare that to what we had observed before, we 
with the OLS model, we're getting one of them here had 4 million error and then minus one, uh, maybe one and a third or something, or one and a quarter a million out. So random forest seems to be better here when we look visually at the level of error compared to the predicted price, random forest is doing quite well. Uh, now, what you would like to do then is to say, okay, that's fine in sample. What if you go out of sample and take that, the, the balance of the data, the testing data, and then using the model predict using the testing data, the predicted price, which we've done here, and then get a measure of accuracy using the R squared and the adjusted R squared. And we've gone from 98%, which we had for in sample, for the training data, and we've gone right down to 89 here, sorry, 86. So that's quite a subsidence. That's quite a fall then in the value of the R squared, which tends to say, okay, it's not robust then, but it's still performing very well. 86% uh, um, R squared is really, you know, it's exceptional. We have seven, one, six, one, one. And when we come up here, uh, we had two, six, five, one, seven. So, you know, comparing the uh, test, and now that's training. When we compare, uh, yeah, the, when we make these superficial, so uh, seven, one, six, one, one for the, where we're using the testing data and when we come up here, uh, that was um, uh, one, two, six, zero, four, one. And if you compare each of these against what we had below, right? Again, this is linear regression and it's for the testing data that the magnitudes here are substantially bigger, whatever measure you take compared to the measures that we have down here. Okay, for error, right? And the last one then is this XG boost, which also is available in um, SK Learn. And what uh, one of the benefits here, the XG boost is also another type of tree estimator. And in recent years, it's kind of been introduced and it's been going into people who have been using it in competitions. Um, and it's been winning, it's been beating sometimes the, the random forest models. Uh, by a whisker, but it's a, an, enough of a whisker that it's people uh, are using it and it tends to be a little bit more computationally fast in estimation speed. So again, we follow the same format for using the training data. Why is what we want to predict the house prices? It's the same 30, 70% split. It's the same data that we used before. We're just using this XG boost. And then we predict the price of the properties using the model. And then we do some preliminary analysis in terms of R squared on the training data. Looks quite promising, it's 89%, so that's quite promising. Uh, but what we want to determine, and again, when we look at the prices versus predicted, showing slightly different type of behavior, but again, it's um, you know not quite a straight line, but it's going up in a linear, there's no arc like what we had sort of observed with the OLS. So that's something that uh, we would see as being a positive, but the true test then is to take the testing data to go out of sample and then estimate the level of accuracy on the testing data. And what we're finding here, it's just a little bit better, 86.6 and 86.6194. And then when we, when we put all the models together and compare and just on the R squared score, we can see the XG boost is just a little bit better than random forest, not much. And maybe if you ran another estimation with slightly, if you did the split on your data a bit differently, random forest might just slip in ahead of XG boost, right? Um, so uh, random forest, uh, again, some of this it, it can be a little bit random depending on how you split your data. And you can do a tenfold cross validation to see how robust the models are. Uh, for this type of analysis here, we've only done the split once uh, from the training and the uh, testing. 
um, and we're comfortably saying, look, um, the XG boost in random forest are better than the OLS estimation for in sample, but also for out of sample uh, as well. 